just gonna record it yeah. so I can edit it. And then you'll and then I'll it put it up for you. And I was told the other night that it was easier for people to see on this wheel. <clears throat> So I think maybe because I'm raised up a little bit, it is a little bit louder because of the motor. And then, yeah, um, so there's a switch under here, a lot like a light switch that turns it on. Um, the motor runs, but the only time it engages with the wheel is when you push the pedal. This is really a, the Locker B kick wheels are amazing. The motor, motorized ones are cooler still. You want to add just the tiniest bit of water. The only way to stop these wheels are to use your feet. So you want to have uh, closed in shoes. Uh, in this case, Fox. <laughs> so once you have your ball of clay, slap it down there in the center. Ish center inch and then you're going to get your hands wet you're going to get some water on the clay and get your wheels spinning now those wheels uh the regular electric wheels the on switch is on the right hand side they go both directions for left-handed right-handed people when you are when you're centering uh you want your wheel to go fairly quickly but before you start to center you're just going to push down slightly and use this portion of your hand to seal the clay to the wheel. So we're just sealing at this point. Just gonna make sure it doesn't slide off and hit somebody, right? Or go into our pants. The next part, we're, what we're going to do is bring the clay up into a cone shape. And that's bringing the clay up in towards the center of the wheel and for this size of a piece of clay, this helps to uh, place your palms as if you kind of pretend like you're going to crack a nut between your palms. So your palms here and here are about 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock. And then you just push together and the clay shoots up. You don't have to raise your hands up. I do have to have my wheel going faster though. So, and see here, I'm starting to get this little divot. You don't want a volcano. <clears throat> you want to make sure that that is nice and pointy because air can get trapped in there. So just use your fingers, use the side of your hand, whatever you need to, to make the top pointy. I should start calling this a Christmas tree since it's towards that season now. <laughs> um, but once you bring this up into a cone, then what you're going to do is push it back down, but you're gonna redistribute the clay, and I'll show you how that's done. So this hand is going to support, your thumb is going to set about in the middle of your palm. You'll use the side of your hand here to push down, your thumb isn't pushing down on your clay. It's just a place for your hand to lean on because your hands work together when you push this clay down. And then you're not going to push straight down like this. You want to angle your hand towards you. It's way easier. If you want to work out straight down, but the wheel will actually do the work for you. I'm going to try and stick my fingers out too so you guys can see a little better. So this hand is pushing down. This hand is redistributing that clay around and centering it into the middle of the uh, wheel. Usually you have to do this a couple times. Now I'm going to hold my hands out. Now some people are like, I don't even know how they do that. They get, have their palms like touching almost. You know, back here, that hurts my wrist. Anyway, um, you don't get any pressure to make the clay go up if you're not pushing on the outside of it. So you wanna push on the outside and then support and 
push down. So if you're pushing down, but not in, you're gonna get a mushroom. So when you push in, the clay redistributes, right? So you're just using from about here down to push in. When you push, you don't have to push really hard. It's more about holding. So I'm going to hold my hand still at this point. If I push, I can push this off center. If I'm not pushing hard enough, I'm just going to bounce. You can see my elbows are into my body. A lot of times my uh, elbow is going to be on my thigh. I can use this leg to push in and help support my hand so my hand doesn't move. It just stays at the same place. Right. And then when you release the clay, you release it very slowly. Because if you're holding on to it and you release it quickly, it goes off center. So you always, no matter what you're doing, want to release the clay slowly, like a breath. You just want to relax your muscles and let go of the clay. Now, I can't open this up when it's this tall because my thumbs aren't long enough to get to the bottom. So you have to push the clay down into kind of like this cake shape before you can open it. A little bit more speed here. Oh, and if you're actually kicking this thing, um, <laughs> which is what I learned on actually is a kick wheel uh, that didn't have a motor, you have to kick and then stop, you know, and kick because you can't kick with your hands on the clay. Just FYI. This is the most beautiful thing to trim on. You'll be learning trimming next week because you can really control and kicking while trimming is wonderful because you can really control the speed. So now I want to find the center. I'm going to support my hands on the wheel. Find the center with my thumbs and push down. I'm going to need water because you'll run out of water and get sticky. Anytime you feel your hands getting sticky, you want to add water. Now, where the way I have my thumbs is nail to nail. So I'm just supporting on the wheel and pushing down. I don't want to go all the way down. And this is the only time you would want to stop your wheel. I know my bottom on this is a little thick, uh, but now's a good time to check. So I can push this down in, stick my finger to the bottom, pull it out, but now I know how thick it is. Check it when it's thicker rather than thinner. Um, because that doesn't give you much to play with. And when you use the wire tool, which I left over there, to uh, cut your piece off in the end, no matter how hard you press down uh, on the wire tool, it lifts slightly. So, actually, I'm gonna just grab that one here. Before I get that going again. All right. So, then I'm going to open it out into a beaker shape. So I'm going to tape, put my thumbs back in and then pull them out. There's two ways to do that. There's that way, and then you could also support with one hand and use your finger to pull it out towards your palm. So I'm going to start with the pulling out with my thumbs to open the bottom. This and then I'm gonna have you guys come by and look. So I've opened out, and you can see my nails have dug in to the bottom. Um, so there's nail marks. Even though I don't have long nails, I still have nail marks in there. That's okay because I'm gonna use my thumb and I'm going to use the fat part of my thumb, can you guys see, to flatten this, yeah? and to compress the bottom of the clay. Now, if I want to uh, 
open it up further. I can use my finger this way, go a little bit further out. I still want to compress the bottom. What are we actually making? A cylinder. Okay. So anything, uh, a cylinder is a good starting point. You can make a cup, you can make a base. Uh, a lot of things start with a cylinder shape. Next week, you're going to start, you're going to learn bowl shapes. So rounded bottoms. And those are basically the only two shapes that you, you know, need to learn how to open. Because everything can come out of either a flat bottom or a round bottom shape. So, um, even bottles. It depends on the bottle shape, on whether the bottom is round or flat. Bottles themselves are uh, more advanced, so you want to learn that in the beginning. But now, since I opened this out, I opened it further to the inside. So you can see that my fingers are curved in. My inside hand, from now on, I'm going to work with one hand inside and one hand outside between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. I'm going to use my middle finger, not my ring finger. Ring fingers are, are uh, index fingers are too strong. You push too hard with those. Um, and we're not pushing at all. And this is a really hard thing to not do. What you're doing is you're locking in at the narrow point that you created at the bottom. You don't let your fingers move at all. You don't push, you hold. You hold at that point and the thicker clay above it will move up as you bring your hands up. So, I want to also make a little bit of a notch. I'm going to use my thumbnail, support the inside. One hand is always touching the other. I don't want to make a really deep notch, but I want a little bit of a notch. And then also, remember, your hands need to slide across your clay, so make sure your hands are wet. So then, you bring your fingers in, and you use this part of your knuckle. This is your guide. This bone is your guide. If it's sticking out here, you're going to either end up with a bowl or you're going to be using this part of your knuckle and making notches all the way up the side of your piece. If your bone is sticking up, the clay is coming up. You're using this fatty part of that uh, knuckle and the fatty part of the side of your finger. So you support one hand on the other, either here. A lot of times on the short piece, you know, when the piece is still short, I'll just stick my thumb up under here, get a little bit more speed going. You don't want to be going, you don't want your uh, wheel to go fast. You want it to uh, go at a, a nice rate, but not super quickly. And then you have to bring your hands up really, really slow because if you bring it up too quickly, I need water. There we go. Finish bringing this up. Um, if you bring your hands up too quickly, you'll create a tornado shape. It'll throw your clay off center. One side will end up being higher than the other. What you want to see are these very small lines close to each other. Okay. So now I'm going to add my water, support on the inside, notch on the outside. Make sure my notch is wet. Get back in there again. And I can pull with my knuckle. Or the other way you can pull it is what I call the upside down pray hands. So you put your hands together, curved slightly, overlap your thumbs so these are working together. You lock in your notch so you're not pushing. You lock in and then you bring your clay up. Ooh, I'm starting to stick again. And you can stop, go back to where you left off, and continue your pull. Okay. But you want to let the wheel go around once. For every little bit, you come up. Now, if you're pinching, once you get to the top, it's going to look like that because I was pinching. I'm going to try and get rid of that. I can compress with the webbing between my fingers, 
I can also support and compress this way. But um, but you'll know if you come off the top and you see a pinch mark that you're pinching, you really just want to lock in and bring that all the way up. So one more time, notch, a little bit more speed there, and pull. I use my ring finger and my index finger to support that middle finger, but you can see that those really aren't doing a whole lot. It's my middle finger where all the clay is uh, accumulating. <laughs> and, uh, don't worry about all the slip on your hands. Some people like to throw a slip instead of water. It's a personal preference. <clears throat> now, what do, what do you do once you've pulled this thing? So now, to shape it, you're, uh, if you want to bring it in, we do something called collaring. This is the only uh, exception to having your hands on the outside of the piece instead of one inside and one outside. Uh, you want to get as much surface area touching as possible and slowly bring the clay in. Because if you go too fast and squeeze too hard, it'll buckle. So just go in slowly. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but as I bring this in, the clay thickens. And so I can actually bring it in far enough to where I can go back and pull it. again so the thickness up here matches the thickness down here. Now, say I want to make this fatter. Your metal rib is a great tool to uh, change shapes. I can even use it here. Um, I support always the inside. Okay? But generally, you hold it in your hand this way with the curved in towards the clay. You can use the other side. It's up to you on what you're doing. Then use your thumb to push in, make it flexible. You push out from the inside to make them spatter. Gently. You want to hold your rib at a 45 degree angle. If you're holding it at a 90, you're scraping. 45, you're gonna pull the extra slip off, but you're not gonna scrape clay off. And then uh, less than a 45, the clay grabs onto it, pulls it out of your hands. No fun. And then it uh, distorts your piece too. So, you can use the rib for lots of different things. Then also your wooden tool, you know, you can use it to make marks. You always want to support on the inside. Think about the shape of your piece. You know, do you want a flat lip? Do you want a rounded lip? Do you want your lip to go towards the inside? Do you want it to come out? You're using all these little parts of your fingers and the fleshy parts usually to make these gentle changes. If you want this to go flat over, it's probably going to fall down and it's not going to work because gravity is not your friend when it comes to clay. It has to be able to support itself. And I'll talk way more about that when we talk about bowls next week because bowls have sides that come out and you have to have, you have to leave clay for support. So now, I want to get all of the water out from inside of my piece, and I mean all of it. Don't leave water in there. Uh, when your clay starts to dry, and there's water in the bottom, I mean, it will take longer to dry, you'll end up with cracks, it's 
not a good thing. You can also use your sponge to get any extra slip off the sides of your piece if you want to clean up the room a little bit. Now comes the tricky part. <laughs> oh, also, I have a throwing handbook that one of my students made for me. He was actually, when I was teaching at Washburn, uh, he was a graphic design major and he took a lot of ceramics. Um, and one of his uh, senior projects was to create this great throwing handbook. So he took a bunch of pictures and so it's all illustrated. He went through his notes, wrote down what to do, and then he said I could use it anytime I wanted to for my classes. So if you go to the webpage, go to handbook and handouts, there's information there. And there's some more I need to add. But <clears throat> there's always this little extra bit of play at the bottom here. Oh, one more thing I want to show you. Um, so if you had pulled up quickly, I made the, now see this is kind of cool looking, it's okay to do the tornado, right? Um, but it can throw your top off so it's not level. If your top is higher on one side for some reason, there we go, um, you can make a pincher out of your needle tool and use your middle finger on the inside of your pot and just create these pinchers where you go through, you touch your middle finger with your needle tool and then pull up so you have a flat rim because you can't trim the piece if one side's higher than the other. So you want to make sure that that is uh, the case. And then go back and finish that rim up. <clears throat> you can use that, that webbing, like I said, or your finger. Now, getting rid of the clay down here. Uh, you want to hold your tool with the sharpest side, it's not like it's sharp, but the sharpest side pointing towards you at a 45 degree angle, so it's narrow. Punch in and then pull straight out. I'm going to support my hand, one hand on the other, so I'm going to grab a hold of my wrist, I'm going to put this hand down here to support it there, I'll hold my tool at a 45 degree angle, and you'll feel it drag. And then you're going to feel it rub onto the uh, wheel head and then pull it straight back out of that injection that you made. Then you can take water, run it down your tool into there. That creates a water barrier. So when you hold the flat side of the tool down here and go underneath and you push that clay up again, that water helps it so it doesn't stick. So when you pull that off, you can generally, not always, but generally get it in one piece. And then that's less that you have to trim. Because you're always going to end up with a little bit down there. And then if you want to, you can also go back with your sponge or go back with your rib and smooth all that out. So then, you're, t you're ready to take this off. So you're gonna put some water on the wheel. I have my fancy, or my fancy wire tool, but they all work the same. I'm gonna wrap them around, place as much pressure as you can uh, with your thumbs onto the wheel and pull towards you. I like to see it move just a little bit. Sometimes if I don't see it move, I'll pull it under again. And then you'll have a board ready for your piece to sit on. So piece upside down, grab one side, tilt it up slightly. You can scoot it off that way. You can actually pick it up this way. You can slide it off onto your hand and set it down that way. Uh, you have options on how you want to move that. So, 
your goal is to have sides that are fairly even from the bottom to the top. It's a little bit fat here. I would trim that off later. Um, base is pretty good. Uh, just have that little bit there, like I said. When I pushed this out farther, it thinned it out so it was the same as this. If you flop a piece, no worries. Squish it together. Get as many finger marks as you can in there. Gives it more surface area, it dries faster. And then uh, use a concrete board to set it up on in an arch. I said surface area. Don't try and use that again until it's dried and you've wedged it. Um, because it's too wet. It's probably got all kinds of, uh, of air bubbles. It's just going to be too sloppy. So the clay that you have left on your wheel is not a problem. Leave that there. You don't have to scrape it off. You just want to get the water off of it before you throw down your next ball of clay. The other thing you want to do before you touch your next ball of clay is dry your hands. So we're going to use these rags to dry our hands. Not clean them, just dry them. And then we're also going to, um, we're get, after we're done tonight, we're going to wash them out in the sink, bring them back. And this is the final uh, cleaning method of our wheels. I'll show you how to clean that later too. So, go ahead and get your clay ready. Do you want around a pound and a half? About a pound and a half. 